The East Midlands is not short of fallow deer. Whether or not you believe the government's line that there are more deer than there have been for a 1,000 or 10,000 years, depending on how urgently they want us to shoot them, there are a lot of deer. And that's one of the reasons we're going shooting under special DEFRA licence once it gets dark tonight. As with any kind of stalking, putting the bullet where you want it is at the top of shooters' minds. It relies on range time and, for one of tonight's shooters, Luke, it's reloading. Whether it's increased accuracy or increased confidence in your cartridge leading to increased accuracy, home loading ammunition works for Luke. And, he says, it's fun. It's good for confidence and it's, it's another part of it, isn't it? Making your own bullets is just another factor which makes it, which makes it enjoyable. Bullet choice this evening is the VMAX, a thin jacketed bullet with polymer tip that Hornady originally designed to fragment on impact with vermin, and now stalkers have widely adopted it. Luke explains why. We're going out night stalking on fallow deer. Um, they vary obviously in body weight, we've took off some big bucks off there, so we want something that's got the stopping power, which like a VMAX does. Um, with 87 grain through 243, it's a quick round, so it's fast expanding ammunition, so pretty much is as of any sort of situation with the deer, especially at night, we want to try and stop them in, in spot really, so we haven't got to worry about any runners or anything like that. Luke talks through the process of what he calls a near perfect round. We use brass, which I've, uh, I've shot before, so we're going to take the primers out, the old primer out. Give it a clean, lubricate it, check the size cut it down if needs be because obviously once it's been shot and it's heated up sometimes it, it just extends the, the neck of the cartridge a little bit. So just where it's extended and elongated we're just going to bring it back down to the right length to so resize that if necessary, load a new primer. From there depending on the grain weight we want to use for powder we then load that on the electric scales. Tip it into your case, seat your bullet. One of the main differences between our buying factory ammunition and then loading your own is factory ammunition, say for a 243 Winchester, what we're loading, loading today. You buy factory ammunition, it's, it's made to cover every possible rifle across the world. Um, typically, it's made short. But when we load our own, we want it to be as tight up in the lance as possible so that it reduces the jump of the bullet into the barrel, which then obviously that little jump can have a big hindrance on accuracy. So we sort of back it off just a tiny bit, like a a few foul just to make sure it's not too tight when you're putting the bolt in and then we'll go out and test it just to make sure it's performing well. Sounds like you're making a cup of coffee. Pretty much, yeah. Step by step process. And you'll end up with this absolutely perfect round with which you cannot miss. That's the idea. That's the idea. Out on the range with the sun setting over the Vale of Beaver, Luke tries out a couple of his new cartridges. Once it gets dark, we will be driving over the border to similar country in Lincolnshire to look for deer that Luke and his shooting buddy Mark Singlehurst have already scouted. Luke gets the satisfactory result he was looking for. It does take time to reload bullets and most deer stalkers might argue that life, being as short as it is, it's easier to buy ammunition off the shelf. Is it cheaper in the long run? Opinion among rifle shooters is split. Luke reckons it is. Start off with your brass, you say you buy, buy a bag of 100, etc., but it's not just a one time use. So that brass then can be used multiple times, um, which then brings the cost down. Um, your bullet heads, they vary depending on what you want for calibre, for bullet, for bullet uh, grain weight, and all those different factors. So it, it does work out cheaper than buying um, factory ammunition. We head out to the ground we're shooting on. First thing we see is the booming population of hares. What we're after is fallow deer. Luke explains what we're going to do. So we're out tonight on a deer night licence. Um, we're in Lincolnshire. The main aim, yeah, we're looking to go out and control some fallow deer. We've been in the area recently, South Lincolnshire Deer Society, done drone survey in three years and they estimated about four and a half thousand fallow around here, about three, three and a half on our sort of block. So where we are, well, a lot of large mature woodland, a lot of arable, um, and the majority of the time they're passing through at night. So even though say, there's damage to be seen in the day, the deer aren't always necessarily here. So being able to come and control at night as they're passing through is like our best bet. Different groups pass through at different times. If we get into a group and we can, we can happily control four, five, six, seven, then we will. 
it is more complicated than stalking in daytime. First thing is, obviously, we have to register with the local police constabulary to let them know that we're coming out. We have to go through the whole system of identifying who we are, what we're doing, vehicles, etc. Uh, and then it's obviously getting into, into the deer isn't necessarily as difficult in the day because they lose big big part of their defence, their sight. But then obviously identifying what we're controlling is the main thing. The deer are doing large or vast damage to arable crops around here um, at night. So they're not here in the day. And so they're sort of using this ground as sort of like a passing place around this sort of block of block of the countryside. Um, so the farmers around here have lost thousands of pounds worth of yield, crop yield annually. The woodland that we're stood in now, it's like a 70 acre block of mature woodland. The the damage to ground flora and is yeah quite vast. So coming here at night is the only time we're ever going to get really get on, get on top of them. This is an ambush. This is an ambush. Luke and Mark set off from the vehicle in different directions. Is that a recipe for disaster at night? No, not if you know your ground. You know exactly what the plan is and you keep checking on the radio. All right, watch that. So yeah, I'll um I'll drop down to that big grass field on the bottom. Okay, no worries. The animals appear on cue. Just come down onto the bottom grass field. How are you getting on? Drop one, there's a lot coming your way, so be careful. They're in the woods, they'll run through to you. Roger that. Luke quickly spots them on the thermal, heading his way. Got two down, um, both does by the looks of things. Um, the group sort of wrapped around us and then stopped because of sort of our wind was sort of blowing slightly towards them. As soon as they got out of our wind, they slowed down the group at the back. Uh, I've taken one and then they've split. Luckily, one's run back towards us and I've managed to take that one as well. So, yeah, two on the ground. Happy days. Lovely stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you've got two down, I've got a yearling prick here and a doe. Well done, I'm just trying to find mine now. Roger that, do you need a hand or are you good? No, I'm good, I'm good. I'll meet you down the bottom. Roger that, there's a big group, you know the far Christmas tree sort of block past the beans, there's a big group coming across there onto the beans. Luke goes to see if he can get onto the group of animals in the bean field, but they wind him. Mark and his dog find the animal he shot. That's three on the ground in just a few minutes. When we covered night shooting under licence in Scotland with Neil Rowntree, extraction of the carcasses was a problem. Here on Lincolnshire pasture, it's easy with a mule. Yeah, dead straightforward. We'll just drive around, pick them all up. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Done. Should be in McDonald's by 9 o'clock. Yeah, in McDonald's before to closing. Yep, yeah, perfect. To watch our film about night shooting with Neil Rowntree and for more from Vale, Field and Game, follow the links below.